hello everyone. We're fucking back. Oh my god, Hi. we're so back. Hi. Hi, it's me, Gene Simmons from the band Kiss. How are you? And I am Gene Simmons tongue. Oh, oh my, that's hot. Oh my god. I that. just want to let my tongue know that I would not have a career without you. I should be worth more than you. I think you are. Human. I honestly do. I think if you look up your net worth, it's higher than mine. I would hope so. I would too. Well, I'm one of the platform boots and uh, the makeup artist. Uh, okay. So I created a vision. You, yeah. I don't I don't think that that's kiss. I don't know anything from Kiss. I want you to show me the way. No, that is that is definitely uh, not that's Kiss. That's Peter Frampton, I think, actually. Oh. It doesn't matter. I feel like I'm on VH1. Yeah, but, we are. Well, Bands reunited. Well, anyways, we're reunited. Hi, we Anna had, we, we had a plethora of shit gone down this year. We sure oh, did. Yeah. We are coming back. We're back. Yeah, we're back. We're and back. we're recording content. Yeah. Being grown up sucks. Yeah, it, it does. does. It, it does. really does. It totally yeah. sucks. Yeah. 2023 has just not been kind to anyone. 2023 no, no, can fucking fuck off already. Yeah. Well, a few weeks ago, like, I made a Instagram post on Bizarre Buffet's Instagram just explaining, like, you know, what's going on in our world and why it's taking us forever to make content right now. And I said that 2023 has been doing us dirty. They have I know. been. Yeah. All right. So every time we do an episode, we start with, like, a question. We do. We do. We and always do. This, mm-hmm. is, this is a topic that I pick, so I'll start the question. My underwear are purple. No, they're not. <laughs> I thought that was going to be a question. I like you in red. Oh my god, is red a good color? Sexy color. Thank you. It's the devil's devil's color. I don't know any of what they're talking about. I don't know. It's okay. okay. I don't either, really. So So it's fine. Here is my question for you guys. Okay, Barbara Walters. Are you ready? What was the worst outdoor experience of your life? Oh god. I feel like I mentioned two of them already. Like probably we have episodes. almost a hundred episodes, yeah. so most likely. But like for me, like the for one it. that's always sticks out with me is the episode that you did on the Matawan shark. Yep, where Madeline I Chalker got Chalker. like pulled out into the ocean and had to be rescued by lifeguards. Oh my god, that's right. The lifeguard I, came for you. Literally. That was like way over a decade ago, and I still won't go in the Jersey Shore water. I don't fucking blame you. Won't I do don't, it. I don't blame you at all. I'm very scared of bodies of water, like all of them. Mm-hmm. Lake, it's like that undertow is just so scary. It, it is sucks you right up. Yeah. Oh, you know what, Jen? You are so you have a great memory because I remember telling the story about being on like a surfboard and drifting out with my killer niece well in prison i don't know her p.o box so i'm don't send her mail she's a murderer no you can go on friend of prisoner.com if you like <laughs> you could probably find her there absolutely yeah did we just make reference to like five i yeah. think we did we're good oh, at like making God. these episode remixes we are we're, we did an episode for like write a prisoner.com we did yeah. write a prisoner.com my niece uh is a killer I'm, yeah i'm related to a killer my niece is a killer yes. i don't remember the title the madawan shark madawan shark holy shit all right there's a lot out there for so, you So yeah that that would probably be my horrible yeah well i remember once outdoor experience i have like a a a different one that i don't think i mentioned but i remember once and this kind of connects to my uh i'm related to a killer topic Mm -hmm. so i went paintballing once when i was really young with my niece the killer (laughs) and with like killer killer niece hashtag killer niece do you have one let us know in the comments on instagram and youtube but we went paintballing once and i remember i was hit in the back of the neck Oh. with a paintball and it hurt so bad and i was just like i'm done i'm done oh, i'm done a, that's pretty oh yeah annoying. that was a pretty terrible one yeah I'm so glad that's that you're okay thank you personal injury attorneys please reach out to me at <laughs> leah remini's nails like the actress at oh leah remini's nails like jen's nails there we go for reference <laughs> Uh, on Instagram and uh, tell me if Ooh, I have a suit. I like the color. Right? It's Ooh. like an eggplant. It's like, like it's a beautiful. Deep purple. Eggplant. Leah Remini at Jennifer Wilson is coming for your gig, bitch. Actually, I just deactivated it for a while. Oh, no. <gasps> Did you? I just need like a little break. You I know? respect that. I do. We understand. I know, I know a lot of people who do that for like, you know, listen, uh, mental health and social oh, media. Yeah. 
it's very important to separate it sometimes and you're like you know i'm just a little i'm a little overwhelmed by this because mm-hmm. it's not yeah. doing any harm no why not deactivate it mm-hmm. i've deleted my facebook before and then mark zuckerberg told me that i couldn't <laughs> <laughs> and he was like yes she did yeah she did she told me she sent me an alert and she was like we'll keep it for like nine years yeah. and then yeah so uh, yeah Anyway, you want to hear one of my worst outdoor of course. experiences? Yeah. Believe it or not, I used to be a Boy Scout. But I think we talked I about think there's that like already. 20 think episodes you, uh, that might mention you, it. Yeah, I think you mentioned it. I used to be a Boy Scout. And as you know, like, there was supposed to be really, like, If you out. reference any other episode, Mark has talked about being it's a Boy Scout. Scout. Like, I grew up in a dangerous yeah. neighborhood. Yeah. He was episode a episode that we talked about the Woodpine Derby. The Woodpine Derby. The Pine Derby. Oh, God, oh, God. <laughs> I w- the wood, we had the wood, a lot to drink tonight. We did. We did. So we're, we're trying well, to live actually, our best. no, I didn't. They did. Yeah, exactly. We did. Yeah, Mark and I did. So, um, well, I guess for me, like, one of my worst outdoors experiences came from when I was a Boy Scout. So, we used to have to go on these camping trips in the woods, and you would have to, like, make your own tent and eat hot dogs and crap. <laughs> was that part of the curriculum? I, I don't know. Remember. <laughs> eat hot dogs. I was just... That, that would be kind of questionable now in the Boy Scout yeah, world. They, they would be like, this is bad. Yeah, no, I just, no, no, I just no, thought no. that dads looked hot. Yeah. When they wore like the uniform. Oh, reference so reference episode one so through ninety so fucking yeah. six to hear Mark you know, say the like, same thing. Yeah, man. Yeah. But um <laughs> so, so I got stuck. So He's like, I consistent. Wasn't, I'm consistent and I was very like unpopular. I didn't have any like friends in the Boy Scouts because I was allowed to watch Rated R movies. We still don't have any friends and, in the Boy Scouts. And I was gay as fuck. So yeah. like no one really liked me, but I didn't really care because yeah. I was after their dads exactly so <laughs> I, I digress so if you wonder a, former boy scouts if you wonder where your fathers went they went with mark Torello. no they didn't because i tried yeah so okay so let's just oh talk about God. this outdoor nightmare so yeah, we did this do. camping trip and it was like the theme of it was canoes so we had to go in a canoe all the boys went in the canoes with their friends and i got stuck with like the head of the boy scout Troop. Okay. It's called a Cub Master. Oh. Or Scout Master. It's very porno. Cub Master. It's really, Cub, yeah. yeah. Very porno. But, like, I didn't think the Scout, yeah. I didn't think he was hot. Yeah. So, I got stuck with, like, the one I didn't want to be stuck with. All so, right. he was, like, the head of the Boy Scouts, the okay. Scout Master. He's one of the dads. So, we were on the canoe. He was in the front. I was in the back of the canoe. And we ended up getting lost in the Pine yeah. Barrens. Oh, oh, God. And our oh. canoe tipped over in the water. He had an old-fashioned cell phone. The cell phone got ruined in the water, and we were lost, and it got, like, dark out, and it was a fucking nightmare, and he was screaming and yelling and yelling and screaming. Yelling, yeah. At me saying it was my fault that the canoe tipped over. Okay. And it was annoying. So that was probably my worst outdoor experience in my That's life. That's actually, that probably is the worst one out of yeah. the fucking three of us. I don't even yeah. remember what my story was, I but know. I bet it was. Yeah, yeah. I, I agree with that <laughs> statement. Me too. Jen, Jen and I are great litigators. <laughs> yes. We're like, I agree wow. with that. I agree as well. Yeah. <laughs> Now that we're talking about the outdoors, I guess we'll Love it. talk about the topic. In the past, Jen did a really good topic, and it was one of my favorite Which unsolved one? mysteries of all time, and it was about Diet Lobs Pass. Oh my God, what a throwback! Yes, yes, that was a fantastic. Episode. That was Loved one. Of, that's one of my favorite episodes. Yeah, like it really is. Aww, that was a great was fucking nice. episode. You, yeah, you did it justice. You really did. did a great yeah. job. I don't think there's another podcast that would be as in informative and fun as that one was Aww, about that topic so yeah good. of course it's the truth this is kind of in the same spirit and this topic it's called the Coravina group also known as the kamar Debon incident that's a mouthful now i'm gonna say this this makes diet lobs pass look like fucking Chuck E. Cheese. No. Wow, okay. And Dialov right. Pass That was intense. It's yeah. fucking intense as fuck. There were like rips in tents and people in trees and bears and tornadoes yeah. and twisters. Body parts and everything. Oh my god, so what could be worse than that? Clothing mm-hmm. off. Yeah. Yep. Seamstresses evaluating tents. Yep. So let's get into this. Oh, I'm excited. All right. Yeah. All right, so so let me just say, the Coravina group was a group of hikers. 
It was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hikers total. So the head of the group, her name was Ledmila Korovina. She was the leader. She was 41 years old. The next person was Alexander Sacha Kryson or Krizen. They were 23 years old. The next person was Tatiana Filipenko, 24 years old. Dennis Shvakin, 19 years old. Valentina Utachenko, who was 17. Victoria Zelazova, 16 years old. And then finally, Timur Bapanov, 15 years old. So this story, it starts in August of 1993. And oh, like more recent. Yeah. For me, I always pick these old ass things. I was three years old. Like, I was no, five, did you, like, this is, like, I was expecting you to say, like, the 1700s. I know, no, really. Is, okay. No, I was, too. Time. Where? Wait, what was your question? Where? Oh, R- Russia. Russia! See, Russia. Oh, Russia. Why do you have to be so problematic and have so many they great lo- stories? I know. Russians have a lot of uh, stories. Yeah. Anatoly. Anatoly Movskin. Dyatlov's past. Yeah. I feel like we have 90,000. Tattoo. Tattoo. Cannibal Island. Cannibal, Cannibal Island. Island. Tattoo. They were Tattoo. not even Tattoo. Lesbians. We didn't do they an episode about them, but angry. there's a lot of references to Tattoo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, this this shit went down in August of 1993. 41-year-old Ledmila Korovina, who was like the leader of the group, she was a well-known, like experienced hiking instructor and diehard survivalist. Oh. And she was the one to lead this hiking trip to Kamar Deban, which is in a region of Boryatia. Boreatia. Boreatia. <laughs> Boreatia. That's how we say it in Jersey. But it's part of Siberia in Russia. Siberia. Very so cool. So all of our Russians listening, you know where it is. I don't. I don't think we have many Russian yeah, listeners, have, but... We have one Russian. Russian listeners by association. Hello. Nostrovia. Hello. I like vodka. We do. <laughs> so basically, this area, it had rugged scenery. It really made it a very popular tourist hiking spot. It's considered more of like an intermediate area for hikers. So it's not really for beginners, but it's not really hard enough for it to be like expert level, like okay. you're cl- climbing like Mount Everest. Right. Wow. It was also the summer season, which made that area safer to hike. Oh. So this is in the summer. Yeah. So Ledmilla was known for being a mentor to many, many people with almost this sort of like tough love approach. Okay. But all of her students, she said she truly helped try to make the best of themselves and develop their hiking skills. Okay. And like personal skills. So she was like a good lady. Now, before the trip, she trained her students in preparation, though some people argue in later times that her training was too severe. Oh, she was a bit of a hard ass. She was a bit of a hard ass, but all of her students said that she truly helped them make the best of themselves and really develop their hiking skills. So she was like a hard ass, but like with a heart. With a heart, yeah. yeah. That's I like love me. That. Yeah. I'm like that as a director. I'm a hard uh-huh. ass, but like I, I love I love them. Well, you are a very well educated woman in the performing arts, as you should be. Oh, thank you. And know your direction and to tell these bitches what to do. <laughs> the end, period. Before this hiking trip, yeah. she she trained her students. You know, to prepare for everything. Yeah. The first of the six and the closest to Ludmilla was 23-year-old Alexander Chrysan, who I mentioned earlier. Correct. So they were, they were very close. Okay. Now, Ludmilla had known him for most of his life and almost considered him to be like a son to her. Now, on August 2nd, 1993, the seven hikers arrived to their mountain range. Oh, boy. As far as the weather conditions, it was really ideal for hiking. It was clear and sunny. That's what makes this weird, oh, too. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Because in Diet Love's Pass, there was like a blizzard. Dark a, and broody. A potential avalanche. No one really knows. Yeah. And yeah. this one is bright and sunny. This is bright and sunny. And I always say, what bad things could happen when it's bright and sunny? Out? A lot of things. Yeah, a lot. Apparently, if apparently you're so. in 
this hiking group in Russia simultaneously while they were hiking there was another hiking group as well in the same area and they were scheduled to meet up during this hike and finish the rest of the hike together now how long was the hike supposed to last do you know I don't think it was going to be long I would say no more than three days okay so it was like a handful of days because I think Diet Love's Pass was like longer Diet Love's Pass was like a long ass hike. Yeah. It's probably like a year excursion because yeah. they had like a dog sled and yeah, everything they had else. To, or, but yeah. they had to actually hike to get to the area where they were hiking to. Yeah. Like, yeah, And they had to like take a train and like yeah. all these different modes of transportation. Yeah. This, so, this was the 90s when things were supposed to have been more advanced. Yeah. <laughs> Correct. This other hiking group, oddly enough, was being led by Ledmilla's daughter. And her daughter's name is Natalia. They were slated to cross paths on the 5th of August and complete the descent of the hike together. Okay. So the first two days of the hike, everything was perfect. Yeah. Normal. Now on August 4th, as they began to descend, the weather quickly changed as they were faced with a monsoon. Oh. Mm-hmm. Monsoon, a monsoon season. Wow. Now, due to the rain, the hikers' supplies and bags were soaked, and it added a lot of weight to their backs. Oh, shit. So you're carrying all this soaking wet luggage, or I don't want to say luggage, but like well, hiking yeah. shit. Hiking gear. Yeah, yeah I mean, hiking it, gear. It, it's essentially luggage of sorts, because it's like, th- these are the things you need to take with you. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of made them all really exhausted from this exhaustion Ledmilla, the head of the group like the motherly figure decided okay it's time for us to camp out and for some bizarre reason no one really knows why but she chose like this exposed area that had no rocks no trees no shelter and this is during a monsoon what the fuck this is really unusual considering the fact that There was tree-covered locations very close to this area that would have been more idyllic Mm -hmm. for shelter during a monsoon. And from this monsoon, the group was unable to build a fire that night, but they weren't, like, shaken. You know, they had enough experience, and they were prepared for anything. So the next morning, they made a fire, they had breakfast, and they planned on meeting up with Natalia, who was the leader of the other hiking group. So the daughter. The daughter. Okay. And they were supposed to, like, meet up. Now, later that day, Natalia and her group made it to the meeting spot. But her mother with the hiking group never showed up. Oh, okay. shit. Wow. So they're like, oh, boy. Now, eventually, that group moved on, but they weren't worried. They figured, okay, you know what? There's a lot of bad weather. Maybe the Ledmilla's hiking group was set back. Okay. Maybe they had to turn around. Yeah. Like, you things know. like that. Yeah. So now we're going to fast forward to 10 days later. So it's August 10th. And there's a random group of kayakers that are paddling down the river. And they notice something weird in the tree line at the base of the Kamar Daban Mountains. Kamar Daban. Kamar Daban. So at the base of the mountains, they found a lone girl standing there and just staring at them in a catatonic state. What the fuck? Mm -hmm. When they approached her, they found that she was covered in blood. She became hysterical, trying to explain what happened. But was really unable to identify herself oh, shit. or her hikers. And eventually she was able to say, I am Valentina Udachenko. She said that she was hiking with her friends for a few days. That's all she could remember. Wow. They took her to the nearest police station where a report was filed. But it wasn't until years later that she was able to share what actually happened. Oh, God. Oh, How old was she? She was in her teens. Oh, my God. So she was incredibly young. Ooh, Dijenko. Mm-hmm. Wow. So what do you guys think happened real quick? Uh, and this girl was just found randomly? She was part of the original hiking so when did, group of seven when people. When did the monsoon happen? On what day? Was it day two? August 4th was when the monsoon happened. And August 10th is when she was found at the base of the mountain. 
I'm gonna say something with the weather like killed them all out. Okay. You think it was the weather? What like you- trees and shit. I mean, monsoons are pretty serious. They're like winds, mm-hmm. heavy winds. Yeah. I don't mm-hmm. have a real good I explanation. I feel like it might be Mother Nature's fault. Yeah. Once again. All right. So, yeah. we, so, so we both think it's like nature related. Yeah. I mean, okay. I don't see what else, what it, could else it could be because it's fucking ridiculous. Right. Well, let me tell you what happened. Oh, God. Shit is fucking bizarre. And it's scary. Oh, my God. I can't wait. So what happened? Okay. The morning they were supposed to meet that secondary hiking group, just moments before they were eating their breakfast, something gruesome and unexpected happened. Oh, shit. Something aside from the monsoon? Yeah. So first, Sasha, who was part of the hiking group, Mm -hmm. Sasha was in the back of the group upon the hike and all of a sudden began screaming. Everyone in the hiking group, you know, the remaining six people turned around to see what was going on. And he was bleeding from his eyes and ears and foaming at the mouth. What? what? Rabid. Stop. Out of nowhere. Oh, my God. Rabies. Yep. He fell to the ground and started to convulse. <gasps> now, Ludmilla, who is the leader of the group, ran to his aid and ordered that the rest of the group continue so they could find help. And Ludmilla would remain. And she was super distraught. And trying to help Sasha gain consciousness. Now, as the group moved forward, not even minutes later, they heard Ludmilla screaming and crying out, who stayed behind. So the person who was helping. Yes, who was the leader of the group. Was she starting to bleed out the eyes? And Basically, yeah, they turned around. Oh. They turned around immediately. They ran back to see Ludmilla suffering the same symptoms as Sasha. And now Sasha lay dead on the ground, and seconds later, she collapsed on top of Sasha. So oh my now god. Two out of the seven are already dead. Oh shit. Now Tatiana, who was the first hiker in the group, she was the first one to approach the now deceased Ludmilla and Sasha. Okay. Right after Tatiana got to their she corpses. Started- doing Mm -hmm. the same it must be something in contact like some sort of weird contact thing it potentially could be because when tatiana got there she collapsed right next to them oh boy and when she collapsed she was grabbing and scratching her throat as if she couldn't breathe oh my god what the fuck and she slowly crawled over to a nearby rock and started to bash her head over and over again and every time she would bash her head, she would hit her head harder and harder and harder. Stop. Until oh. her body finally stopped. My so God. So now, three out of seven. Why was she bashing her head? We don't know. It, so there was something there's crazy going on. there's four people alive. So now there's four left, okay? Oh so God. falling behind Tatiana was now Victoria and Timur, who were basically running toward all of this because they're like what the fuck is going on like we have to help our friends they didn't make it either because upon running over they both collapsed and experienced the same symptoms of bleeding and convulsing oh my god and they too began grabbing their throats they were ripping their clothes and eventually they died too what the Mm -hmm. fuck so now you have dennis and valentina the two other group members. One of them ended up running behind a rock as all this was happening. It didn't take long for Dennis to drop on the ground and die from convulsions out of nowhere. So what now- What the fuck is going on in yep, this goddamn So it's like they're place. all dropping rapidly like flies. Now the only one left alive is <laughs> Valentina. Valentina eventually runs down the mountain and gets as far away from this site as possible. She only had a tent and clothes on her back. 
for supplies. Right. A tent and clothes. Yeah. Wow. So she had like all like the makings of the tent. And yeah. Stuff. Yeah. So she ends up, she's like, I'm getting the fuck out of here. So she runs yeah. down the mountain. So Holy she's shit. like, something's going on. So once she got far enough away, Valentina ended up setting up her tent under a tree for the night and fell asleep with all of these dead bodies within like, you know. Oh my God. A few minutes reach. Yeah. So she needed to rest and just figure out what the hell's going on. So when she woke up, she immediately knew she needs more supplies because she's in the wilderness and she's right. got to survive. That being said, she knew she would have to return back to the site of her dead friends to retrieve these supplies. She trekked back up the mountain, taking all the items that she needed from their dead bodies. I would be scared to go back there. Uh, I would too. too. I would absolutely. I'd be like, fuck no, I'm going to drop dead. I would rather I, yeah, like, go yeah. with the supplies on my back than go back and get I agree. supplies I, off the infected. Yeah. I fucking agree. It's like you just witness all these people do these bizarre things yeah. like banging their heads against rocks and bleeding from the eyes. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I don't know what's going on, but I don't want your fucking sleeping bags. I don't want no. your beans. I don't want yeah. your fucking None crackers. It. Nothing. No. Because who knows what it is that's making this shit Correct. happen. I mean, maybe it's some sort of virus or something that they ate or who fucking knows. Yeah. You but know? clearly it was something like airborne that like you could just get from like being within it steps seems, of people. It seems like it. Potentially. Yeah, Potentially. So once she got, like, all the supplies she needed, she found power lines, like, in the woods, and she decided to follow them for four days. Oh, and when she got to the four end... Four days. Four days. And when she got to the end, it led her to a dead end, which was a deserted village. A deserted village. A deserted village. So so four she, days of travel on foot so with, with your tent and your bullshit whatever. Mm-hmm. For nothing. For nothing. Yep. But shortly after that, that was when she was found. Now, it wasn't until August 24th, 20 days later, that an official search was conducted for the hikers. Okay. Since Valentina was still in shock, she couldn't really recount the events. And it took helicopters two days to locate the other six hikers. In that were group. dead. They were all dead. She was the only survivor. The only wow. survivor. Holy shit. And upon the autopsy... She it, poisoned them. Well, who knows? I mean, there's a plethora of conspiracy theories. Okay. Yeah. But... Upon the autopsies, it was concluded that hypothermia, and I'm putting that in air quotes, was the cause of death. But hypothermia was not the cause of death for Ledmilla, the head of the group. She oh. suffered from a heart attack. Allegedly. What the fuck? So I is feel like going this is some on. weird cover up to like yep. some this- weird chemical <sighs> Toxic shit Correct. happening. Is I, that what it was? Uh, That's. I mean, no one knows, oh, but that is one of the theories. It's style oh, of past it's part two. Definitely some fucking yeah. cover up. Yeah. For some more. Ask Putin. Yeah, ask Putin. Hashtag ask mm-hmm. Putin. Exactly. We need to start that. So, <laughs> however, <laughs> many people argue that they didn't die from hypothermia oh, like us yeah because oh, they well they had dry clothing inside of their bags and the conditions of the weather and the environment of that time were not that bad right i i don't know 1993 you couldn't have been that fucking no, stupid correct. i don't see an excuse correct and also another thing too to argue is that these campers or these hikers they were well fed and yeah. they had ample amount of food to continue to survive their journey yeah which is like a big you know right. arguing fact so there's a handful of theories i'm just going to throw out i'm not going to get into a deep dive with the theories but i'm just going to present them okay let's hear them yes. oh, this is what we love 
This is why so we come are you to guys Bizarre ready? That's why we come to Bizarre Buffet. That's, that's, yeah. why, we that's are why we do come we do to Buffet. We do come here, though. Come here to even, do this for you. Even though we're hosting it, we do come here with everybody else who listens because we're all interested. Oh, yeah, for sure. So I get it. And a lot of people like to say this is like Diet Lobs Pass Part 2. I believe it. And I feel it. It kind of is, yeah. You know? Yeah, the continuation. So the here, remix. Here's some theories to Tell us. send your way. One of the theories is that it was aliens or the Yeti. Oh my God! Once again, I got love fast. Of course. Yeah. As Jen brought to us before with the Yeti, Ooh, the Thank Yeti um, literature that was found in the mm-hmm. tent, right? Yes. The other theory, like I said, hypothermia. Okay. I don't buy that. No. Nope. At all. It's not 1993. At all. It's if 1993. you don't know how to not get hypothermia, yeah. you're a fucking idiot. No. Yeah. And like they said, their their clothing wasn't like drenched or so. Right? Yeah. The third one, food poisoning. How so. does that happen? How yeah. do you, like how does food? No, but, I don't believe it. But here's no, I, I don't believe it either. I don't think food poisoning would make you bang your head against a rock. No, no. but also like though you could get food poisoning, it, I don't think it would happen that fast and simultaneously. Yeah. Well, like everyone if, all at once. This if they all maze. ate the same thing, then yes. But yeah. if what Valentina is saying is the truth, mm-hmm. I don't think it would be possible for all of them to have the same thing all at once. Um, I agree. Another theory mm-hmm. is that they had rabies. That sounds accurate but rabies would require all of them getting bitten get bit by each other yeah and again the the simultaneous reactions that they all had at the same time yeah that wouldn't be something that you would experience as a group if you had rabies or food or food poisoning yeah the other theories is that valentina did it and well i think there's potential for that one. However, there's really no good motive as to why she would do something do like that. that. How old was she again? Let's, she was probably 17 years old. So she was the youngest, right? No, she was like in, there was like a 16 and a 15 year old as well. Oh, yeah. so she was on the she was one of the younger, less experienced hikers in okay. the group. But that's just another theory. I don't. Yeah. I don't. I, like I would love to know more about that concept and how people think Valentina, that Valentina did, did it. it. That would be interesting to explore some more of. Yeah, yeah, it would be because I'm also, you know, I I'm not a person who's quick to blame somebody who looks like the obvious person. Right. You know, I think mm-hmm. that's a very toxic stance to take. Correct, but. It's normally the most exciting one to go towards. I'm sorry, Valentina. The other one is the Russian government conspiracy. Uh, I believe that. I believe that. I believe that one. And yeah, it could it's be probably like, most plausible. It could be maybe they saw or came across something that they shouldn't have. Mm-hmm. Now, here's my question. Were the bodies actually found? They were found. And did they notice, like gunshots or no they did not notice things like that but the families from the research that i've done they were not really allowed to see the bodies that in itself is a red flag flag. you took the words out of my mouth absolutely red flag there i do know that many many years later in probably like the mid 2000s valentina appeared on public television in russia on a tv show like a talk show and it was the first time she publicly ever spoke about her experience so this all of this information didn't come to surface until like the mid 2000s wow yeah kind of from like, 93 from yeah. 1993 yeah Here's the thing that doesn't really make sense with the government conspiracy because this was a tourist attraction. Right. Yeah. Thousands of people came from all over the world or the country to hike in these mountains. So it doesn't make sense that the government would do some super secretive stuff where there is a high level of tourism. Yeah. Not in the 90s. Yeah. 
the last two are the ones that have like the most weight in my opinion okay this one is about a hole in the ozone due to the heavy unexpected rain from that monsoon so from that monsoon it could have poked a hole in the ozone and it could have been right over the hikers okay creating issues Mm mm-hmm but this is the one that I really believe is oh, the correct one. Yeah, because that sounds a little too like convenient. Yeah. A little too It's yeah. very specific. A little too sci fi. Yeah. Yeah. So the the last one and the one that I believe is the the correct one is um have you guys ever heard of something called Novichok? I think so. Maybe. So Novichok, it's basically like a group of nerve agents used in chemical weapons. And it's considered to be a weapon of mass destruction. Now, in this area, there was a Novichok Research Institute, which was to stop research and production of Novichok in 1993, the same year that all this (sighs) happened. So it's possible that some of this Novichok shit got out yeah and the group of hikers somehow managed to encounter this you know hence all of this that's also very believable too but i still believe the government i know i god (laughs) you know they usually say that the most simple explanation is generally the correct one yeah that to me sounds like the most plausible it, theory it so far but i still blame yeah. the government but i but yes to <laughs> Je- no but to jen's point it's fucking russia mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. it's the fu- they're go- come on look at present day 2020 yeah. fucking mm-hmm. three bitch yeah, come on guys like let's have a fucking moment here <laughs> even their lesbians yeah. aren't lesbians exactly they lie Tattoo. Yeah. So to end this. So come on. So those are the theories. That's the story. There's a lot of, you know, if you want to do a deeper dive on this, you guys absolutely can. Bleeding from the eyes. But to me, what really, what I thought was the most bizarre was the head bashing on the rock. That spooked me. That, like a and horse. Then, like, hmm. imagine, like, being witness to that. Like, yeah. it's crazy town. That is crazy. And, you know, like I said, I found this story to be incredibly eerie. And it does get compared to my absolute favorite unsolved mystery, which is Diet Love's Past. Yes. And coincidentally. Reference our episode from Jen Wilson. Yeah. <laughs> and coincidentally, both stories have these unsolved settling similarities they do and they're from the same region or the same area and from everything no theory really fits into this a hundred percent no right both of these just like that yeah impossible to yeah. solve yeah they both have very unexplainable things exactly and you know i think if you reference mm-hmm. like true crime ish stories like It's bizarre that there's one person left to tell the tale. Mm. And I think, Valentina, I'm talking to you. I think you know things. I think you're not sharing what you know. And I think you should. But first, move out of Russia. <laughs> well, because there's also, a lot of problems there right now. Just anyway. this your way. Ledmilla, the, the motherly figure, the older one that led yeah. the group, her daughter was not allowed to identify the body. There you go. So something something there. odd was going on there. Something funky. There were secretive things. This is oh. what I'm gonna say. End of story. Okay, it wasn't supernatural. It wasn't aliens. This is good old fashioned man made something. And there's one person remaining who is allowed to live and tell the tale, and she knows things that she's never gonna share. That's it. Exactly. Yeah. What they are, we don't know. And that's why this makes a great bizarre that was buffet a really topic. Good episode, Mark. I loved Thank it. Thank you. I loved I it. I loved it a lot. I absolutely did. And um, I mean, you know, in the meantime, if you want to fund our hiking excursion into absolutely. places where we might get toxic chemicals bumped into our brains and bash our heads against rocks, mm-hmm. you can start by funding that process at patreon.com slash bizarre buffet. You can follow us at Bizarre Buffet on Instagram and Facebook and BizarreBuffet.com. Mm-hmm. And I guess with that being said, I am 
Mickey Rourke. And I am the Russian government. I'm Valentina because I will smoke everyone out. Oh, yeah. Blame Putin.